Should you change your investments or your investment approach based on who's going to be in the White House or which party is controlling Congress? You know, back in 08, when Obama got elected, I know people who liquidated everything. I also know people who were at least considering it. And then eight years later, when Trump got elected, same thing. I know people who got out of the market or at least considering it. And so this applies to both sides of the political spectrum. But does it make a difference in a globally diversified portfolio of high quality investments, which party is in the White House or controlling Congress? And what about taxes and social programs? Look, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but we can at least take a look at these things historically. And that's what this video is about. Now, before we get going, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when new videos come out. So let's jump right into it. Politics and money. What is the real challenge here? Politics and money, both of them go right to the core of who we are as individual investors and as people. Because of that, they're both emotional topics. And the mistake we can make as investors is getting the two of them mixed up. So that's the challenge here. That's what we don't want to do. Let's look at the evidence. And if um, uh, you should have, be talking to your advisor about the evidence, and that's one of the best things you can do and have an advisor for is that uh, that third party out there to just kind of give some some unbiased information and just kind of think keep things unemotional. Uh, as Warren Buffett said, the best, if you can't control your emotions, you can't control your money. And that's really what we're talking about today. So politics and money, let's get into it. Let's just look at election years. Did election years, being the fact that it um, uh, was an election year, did the election year itself have an impact on market returns? And uh, going back to 1928, we've had 23 elections. And of those, 19 positive, four negative, average return 11.3%. Nothing in those numbers is different than any other year. So the election years by themselves don't have a big impact on the full year return of that year. Uh, now let's look at history. Are there things we can learn uh, from those years in which we had negative returns? There absolutely is. 1932. Uh, was uh, the worst year of the Great Depression. In 1940, it became very obvious World War II was going to be a bigger thing than what we anticipated originally. Uh, in 2000 was the beginning of the dot-com bust. Now, there was some uncertainty around the election. At, at election time, it took a couple weeks to determine who the president was going to be. But in and of itself, that did, not, that did not affect the entire year's return, maybe a little bit during that time period. And then in 2008, we had a negative return during that election year, but that was right in the midst of the uh, financial crisis. Um, so not a lot of evidence that the election year by itself sways investment returns one way or the other. One thing I'll say, though, with the election coming up, is it's normal to have some volatility in the weeks and days leading up to the election, especially in a, close, a closely contested election like it is. Back in 2016, we saw volatility build up, uh, big swings in the market uh, build up uh, leading up to those days. On the day of the election, the market tanked. And then the next day, it snapped right back and resumed its, uh, its normal trend. So, you know, keep that in mind as we get uh, closer, uh, is that some volatility uh, around the election, uh, especially as close as it may be, uh, is pretty normal. How about the years after the elections? Let's take a look at those things. Can we, can we make any policy or make, is there any uh, uh, strong evidence that we should do anything different in years after the election? It is a little bit different. Again, 23 election years. Uh, we had 10 negative years falling years after, after elections. Um, and then 13 positive, of course. Um, but the average return in the year following election, 9.9%. Okay, so there's nothing really overwhelming that is going to make us say, uh, because it's the year after the election or because a president or a party is in control, which we'll take a look at that in just a minute, um, we're, that's going to sway us one way or the other, that we're going to change the way we invest based on, uh, based on those things by themselves. Let's take a look at the terms of the presidents by themselves. Did the party or the president in office uh, over their entire term uh, have an impact on the investment returns themselves to, and again, to the point where we could say ahead of time, that we're going to change policy based on a president or a policy in office. We've had 15 presidents uh, going back to 1929. Uh, eight Republicans, seven Democrats. is about as split down the middle as you can be. Uh, the average return during presidential returns was 10.3%. Uh, of those uh, 15 presidents, we had three of them that were negative. Let's take a look at that. What lessons can we learn? Hoover uh, 
came into office uh, at the end of a bull market and left uh, during the Great Depression. Okay, so that explains a lot for the negative return there. Uh, Nixon came into office as the gold standard was transitioning, and also uh, the uh, oil embargo had a big impact on negative on uh, stock market returns during that time period. And then Bush came into office right as the dot, dot com bust was starting, and then left office uh, as the financial crisis was towards the bottom. So clearly, that was a negative uh, negative return during his his tenure. We can always argue, we can always ask, did the president themselves during that time period have an impact on those returns? Would they have been better or, or worse based on the policy that, you, that the president used at the time? And you can always argue that. Hindsight's always 2020. The question, though, is ahead of time, can we tell ahead of time that a president is going to have a positive or negative impact on the events that happen at, at that time, the world events, the economic events, and how are they going to do that? So it's not clear at all ahead of time that we would want to change investment policy uh, based on who the president's going to be or what policies they might have. And the big thing here is that, uh, in this case, uh, politics is a variable in driving returns, but it's not the variable. There's always big market or world events that, that are usually are the, are the bigger returns uh, of what the, the market do over a, a, a period like that. So as you can see here, no matter who's in office, red, blue, Democrat, uh, Republican, who it is, uh, the market has rewarded uh, long-term investors under a variety of U.S. presidents. Uh, let's take a look at the party control of Congress. Um, did the party control have a, uh, an impact? Clearly, one over the uh, one party uh, over the other. Again, we'll look at history here. Uh, so, and both of them had have had long periods uh, where they. Uh, that party was in complete control of Congress. So back in the 50s, 60s, uh, through the 70s, the Democrats were in control. And yeah, good economic growth, good investment returns during that period. Uh, during the uh, 90s, late 90s, 2000s, uh, Republicans were in control. Again, good economy, good uh, good stock market returns. During, so there's no real clear evidence that one of them uh, did better than the other. You might ask, well, was the volatility any different? Was the ride any smoother? Both of them had periods in which we had just negative stock market returns. So there's no clear distinction there. And then what about this? What about when both of them are mixed? Again, really not much different. Um, uh, mixed parties, good. Again, good investment returns, uh, you know, historical average investment returns and, uh, and economies along with that. So really, again, no clear evidence as to if one party or the other is in office, which way it's going to be. So what about uh, social programs and tax policies? That's always a hot button item. And the, the theory being that uh, higher taxes and, and social programs uh, would be a hindrance to stock market returns in the economy. And the other side of that would be lower taxes and smaller government would be a, a benefit to the economy and um, stock market returns. But again, the evidence isn't really clear. And I'm not getting into a lot of deep theory about the costs and benefits of social programs uh, and tax uh, theory. That's not what this is about. Let's just take a quick look at a couple cases of uh, very anecdotal evidence uh, in history as to say whether those theories are, are completely supported uh, in the fact that those policies are not necessarily the primary drivers of the investment returns we're seeing here. So what we saw in uh, president, uh, two presidents, two very tax-friendly presidents, President Reagan, uh, cut income taxes uh, quite a bit uh, over his term. And as we, as we see over his term, he had positive stock market returns um, over, his, uh, over his presidency. And then George Bush, again, he cut taxes twice, but over his entire term, uh, the stock market return was negative uh, during his term. Uh, and again, the biggest thing here is that, again, tax policy is a variable in stock market returns, but it's not the variable. Uh, both of them had world and economic events that are going on in addition to the tax policies that they implemented that either added to or took away from the policies themselves. So again, not enough evidence here to say that, one, it would be implemented, and two, what the impact would be, because there's a lot of things to take into account. Uh, so let's just take a look at two cases of uh, big social programs that were put into place. And the first one is uh, back in 1935, Social Security, as we know. Um, and again, uh, there's no, it's not like the economy or the stock market halted because the Social Security was put into place. Uh, Long-term uh, investors have been rewarded uh, for investing in the stock market, even with Social Security uh, in place. 
Uh, and it's already argued. You can't. You could argue one way or the other whether it was a benefit or a hindrance to what the returns would have been. It's not clear. And then same thing with Obamacare in 2010. Not quite as much evidence there. It's a slice of history. Uh, but again, there's no evidence at all that it really slowed the stock market down uh, during his uh, his period. So that's it. Uh, just to kind of summarize things, hey, money and politics, both of them are emotional. Uh, we don't really want to get them uh, mixed up. Make evidence-based, uh, rational decisions. Talk to your advisor. That's what a good advisor is there for. Uh, politics is a variable when it comes to uh, stock market returns, but it is not the primary driver. There's a lot of economic things going on, and tax policy is just uh, one of them, or politics in general. Uh, we can always argue in hindsight as to what a policy did to impact returns, uh, but there's not enough evidence uh, to change policy ahead of time as to how that might be. And then uh, the other thing, too, is always keeping in mind that if you're thinking about something in the stock market, uh, so are uh, so are many, many other investors to the point where the market's going to price those expectations and those concerns uh, into, uh, into their stock market uh, returns uh, accordingly. So it's a very efficient market, uh, and it's really hard to um, to anticipate things ahead of time and, and jump on it. So there you have it. You've seen some historical evidence and you can use that information uh, to decide whether you should change your investment approach or your investment allocation. And again, everything I talked about was based on a globally diversified portfolio of high quality investments. I'm Dan Lomar with United Wealth Management. If you're a United Pilot and you could use some assistance in financial planning or developing an investment strategy, please reach out to me at dan at unitedwealthmanagement.com. Until next time, fly safe.